No way for that. Good evening. A few of you on this channel have asked me about the British language, the original one, Common Brythonic or Britonic, and asked me to make a video on it. And that's very relevant to this channel, so let's have a shot. Now, if you would like a longer video on this, please let me know, but this is just very brief. And we're going to go with Brythonic because in 1879, a Welshman, John Harris, coined that term for it. And because this is a Welsh channel, we of course want to use any term that's culturally Welsh in significance. So Brythonic as opposed to Britonic. And this would have been the language that was spoken in Britain when the Romans came. But it's not that simple, right? So you had Celtic, and Celtic was spoken across Europe, much like a Proto-Slavic language or Proto-Germanic language and Proto-other such languages that broke up gradually. And this eventually would have broken up into P-Celtic and Q-Celtic. Okay? And, or Insular and, well, to make it more simple, let's just say Brythonic and Irish, basically, which is what it is. And Irish was spoken you guessed it, Ireland, <laughs> and Brythonic was the British one and, well, that greater branch of Celtic, P-Celtic, Gaul as well, present-day France, Belgium, parts of Switzerland, and these were diverging. I mean, this was already like 1700 BCE, that's a long time ago. But the British, what became British, had moved into Britain from Gaul, probably, or up the sides. I mean, there's different theories, and I have my own theory, and I think it came in from the West, but ultimately from Gaul, what would become France. In any case, whichever one of those several theories you want, it doesn't matter what happened is, a language emerged that stretched all the way from present day kind of southern mid France all the way up to just below the highlands in Scotland and this was one language with a series of continuums and dialects and above that in the highlands you had Pridenic which would have become Pictish eventually and this was probably the first one that had managed to, well, certainly by the first century when the Romans came into southern Britain, the language which would become Pictish was already breaking off by that point. So it was a, a divergent long before the others. Now Tacitus, the Roman writer, historian, in his book Agricola, which was about his father-in-law, who was governor of Britain, he wrote that the Britons spoke a language not too dissimilar from Gaulish, which the Romans had conquered. And several Roman writers say this. Julius Caesar says this in terms of customs, that these were very similar peoples. And what you would have had was a continuum, and these would have been the dialects. You had Middle France, basically. You would have had kind of Emorica, present-day Brittany, and the northern bit of France, and Gaul, well, and Belgium, what is present-day Belgium, that kind of area. These would have been major dialects. In Britain, you would have had the southeast of England as a dialect, probably going north a bit on the east coast, and the southwest horn would have been a greater elongated dialect. And Kenneth Jackson, uh, kind of a linguo historian, he wrote that certainly in the Roman period, Western Britain, which is what he considered kind of Wales, and kind of going inwards toward the River Severn and towards present day Birmingham, this was a dialect already emerging in the Middle Roman period. And then North England would have had its own dialect, 
and going up into southern Scotland, there would have been another dialect emerging. And all of these, if left alone, they probably would have become their own languages. And three of them kind of did. We have Welsh, Cornish, and Breton. And just for example, one word in all of them, which you can see the difference. So the word for Brythonic in Welsh is Brythonic. Brythonic. And in Cornish, you have two different words. Predonic and Brythonic. That hardening at the end. And that hardening at the end in Cornish is a bit like some southern dialects in Welsh. It's a continuum. And they crossed the water in Brittany and their ancestors would have come probably from kind of Dorset, Hampshire area, the middle south coast of England. So they came from another British dialect and probably merged with dialects that were already there or which had survived in Brittany, what is present day Brittany. And this word in Britain is Predonic. So you can see that there's a shift that carries through. And if you look at remnants of like Cumbric or Old Welsh in the north of England, it's on the spectrum as well. The consonants are less hard as you move north and more hardened as you move south and are more teeth based as you move south and less so as you move north. And this suggests that this was the main element of this dialect continuum. But it's also indicative that there was a language here already when what was in Gaul expanded in to Britain. Between 1300 and 800 BCE, this language was expanding into Britain and it probably replaced either what would become Irish or in the northern bits, certainly, of Britain, a pre-Indo-European language which may have made Pictish in the far north. It may have given it an underlayer which made it different enough to diverge earlier. And so when the Romans came by the first century, this was already a multi-layered ancient language beginning to diverge with different influences upon it from different directions. Some of you have commented, say, well, what do we have left of the original British language before Welsh, Cornish, and Breton? We don't really. We have place names here and there, which I've covered a bit in a few of my videos. See my place names in England video, Welsh place names in England, if you would like some suggestion of that. But as far as text, we don't have anything of the original British language. The Romans, when they came in, turned much of the population of South England into slaves or removed them, forced many in Central England and Wales to work in mines. They subjugated this people quite cruelly and did not want their language rising up with Latin. And as a cause of this, uh, an effect, the surviving British languages which emerged out of that fusion are very heavily influenced by Latin. These are much more Latin based Welsh, Cornish, Breton than English is. Certainly much more so than Irish. And it's part of what makes Welsh beautiful in my humble opinion that it is so Latinate. In any case, the British language did not leave much behind other than Welsh, Cornish, and Breton themselves as evidence of its existence. It left behind the Bath curse tablets, which if you want a video on that, let me know. But this is basically related in the custom to what was happening in Gaul. See my Gaulish video, maybe I'll update that before long. People would curse each other with tablets and throw them in holy waters. And this was found near Bath. Carvathon in Welsh. And that's significant. This shows cultural similarity, certainly between Gaul and Britain, which lends credence to 
it being so similar, and they don't even know, in fact, if this is British in language on those tablets. It's 50% Latin, certainly. The other bit may, in fact, be Gaulish. So I'm aware that some of you will be disappointed that there's not much left of British. But if you want the British language, learn Welsh. <laughs> Now one thing I can tell you as a linguist myself is that British was an agglutinative language or more agglutinative and most Indo-European languages at this time were meaning that it glued things on and made longer words rather than having small connector words like prepositions that you slotted in between things to convey direction and possession. It also had a case system which makes it a different language to Welsh. And so could a Welsh speaker look at if a text had survived of Brythonic and be able to read it? No, I don't think so. Not merely the time lapse in terms of vocabulary changing, but basic structural grammar. But a lot of the vocabulary would be similar. And that's the ground layer of the Welsh language that everything else is built on is that British language. Well, that was basic, and if you'd like a longer video, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my six Patreons. If you would like to join me, I'll put a link down below. Or you can join my membership. It's just a, a small tip per month on that join button. Together we can make this channel flourish. And I hope for those of you who asked that question about the original British language that this suffices in an answer. There's not much we have left, but if you want to know what we do have left, you need to learn Welsh, or Breton, or revived Cornish. Hey. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next episode.